This video details how the Basic To Do app works on the CanJS website. So what this app does is allows you to select different to-dos and use history to go back and forth between them. It also lets you edit a to-do and delete a to-do. Now let's get to the code. I've got a UL um, for holding my to-dos and I've got an editor input element where I can edit my input el I can edit my to-dos. I've also got a to-dos EJS template as a script tag. Uh, we'll come back to what this does in a second. So let's get to the JavaScript code. The first thing I do is create a to-do model that can be used to retrieve to-do data from the server. Unfortunately, we don't have a server, so I mock up the to-do model service methods find all, find one, update, and destroy using dummy data from the to-dos array. You'll notice that I didn't use the string URL values for the service methods. Instead, I implemented each method, returning a resolve deferred for each service method. A deferred is like a promise. It is an object that will, will have a value sometime in the future and allows other objects to listen to when that deferred gets its value. When we resolve a deferred, we are giving it a value. So for find all, it resolves to an array of to-dos. For find one, it resolves to a single to-do item. Um, for update, it updates the to-dos array, but res just resolves itself, letting model know that the update happened successfully. Destroy does the exact same thing. By model, by model letting you implement these service methods, and by using deferreds, it makes it really easy to hook up a model to almost any type of data service. So this lets me eventually in the to-dos list get all the to-dos. So let's look at the to-dos control. This creates a to-dos control constructor function that can be used with a new keyword to create a list of to-dos. So we actually do that down here. So when the a new to-do list is created, or a new to do any control is created, the init function is called, and it's past the element that it was uh, created on and it was also passed the options. Uh, so what we're going to do is we don't really pass it any options we just pass it the element. You can also get the element from like this, this dot element. These are the same kind of thing. And what you can do, what we do is we find all to do's with using the model. We pass it just empty params which typically means get everything. And a callback function that will get called with our to do instances. So when to do find all is called, this calls back with a list of to do instances. These are instances that you can like bind to, they have the properties of the data that was returned, um, all this good stuff. So what we do is we want to render a template. Uh, we basically want to, we want to update the DOM to look like this. What we do is we say render this to do list with my template to do's EJS by calling can view to do's EJS. And this will return a document fragment that we will insert as the HTML of this controls element. So let's look at what's going on inside the template. And the template, which is which is all the code in here between this top script tag and the ending script tag, it's going to go through each so this here is the data that we passed in to the template. So it's the to-dos. So this means to-dos. And what this is going to do is go through each to-do instance and call this function back for each to-do instance. It's then going to, and for each to-do instance, it's going to create an li element. This is like a template uh, language. It's very much like ERB. Um, you can also consider it kind of like PHP and those kind of templating languages. But instead of operating on just a string, it, it operates really on a document fragment. Um, here what we're doing is we say for this li element, we want a kind of a callback to run when it's, when it's created in a, into a element. We want to say with this element, add the to-do instance to jQuery data. For those who aren't familiar with jQuery data, 
Um, it's just a way of adding arbitrary data to an element. So you can, if you have an element, you can get to some data. Uh, this is really useful if you're not using it already. Uh, it also creates an input element, um, f the checkbox for each to do. Um, and here we'll mark it as checked. We'll, we'll read the to do's complete attribute. We'll see if it's true. And if it's true, we'll add checked to the input. Otherwise, we'll just add nothing. Uh, and then we also add a span, which is which contains the text. And here we're going to add a class name done, which is just has like a line through. The, the class just has a line through. We're going to add a class name done uh, if the to-do is complete. And then we're inside the span, we're just going to put the name of the to-do. And finally, we're going to put a link that you can click on and destroy the to-do. So that just goes through and, and generates this document fragment that gets inserted into the element. Whenever a new control is created, um, and to-do's control is no exception, whenever a new instance of to-do's control is created, it goes through and binds any event handlers. And event handlers are kind of functions that have basically essentially anything other than characters in them, like spaces and dots and whatnot. It knows that those are event handlers waiting to be bound. So what to-do's control is doing is listening for any time an li within its element is clicked. So when we click one of these, this function gets called back. And what this li click does here is it it gets the from the li it gets past the li it gets it past the element that was clicked and with that li we read back the to do instance data and we're going to trigger a another event on the element which is a selected event um, but with the to do instance data this is kind of an event oriented architecture approach for building widgets essentially this is we're making a list widget that publishes selected events whenever some the user selects like an item from the list, so that other widgets can listen for that themselves and then do the appropriate thing. Like to-dos is actually a, is a, what's like a traditional view. Um, it also listens for whenever an li complete is clicked, so that's listening for when the checkbox, which has the class name complete, is clicked. Um, and what that does is it gets the closest, it basically it gets past the element, which is going to be the input element. It gets the. It walks up until find this first li, which is going to be the li that has the to do on it. It's going to get that to do, and it's going to update its complete property um, with whatever if it's checked, if the checkbox is checked or not, and then it's going to save it to the server. One thing that's awesome right now is when this this complete property is updated. Um, it auto updates this style. It'll auto add the style. This is through EJS. So as I'm toggling this, right, it's changing the complete property. When the complete property is changed, EJS's live binding knows to rerun essentially this code um, and update the class name of the span auto magically. So we don't have to go in here and know, hey. You know, go chain, go to the span and update its class name. Nope, that will happen automatically with the with the live binding. Um, the next event handler in to dos is li destroy click. That kind of does the same thing. Gets the li for when we this is for when we click one of these things. Um, it gets the li. It uh, gets the to do instance from it, and then it calls destroy on it. I'm going to update, refresh the page real quick. So the the cool thing about destroy is that you can see here that it's automatically removing the instance when we call destroy from the page. Now, how this works is that when a to-do list, so when we found all our to-dos, this is a to-do uh, this is what's called a model list. It's it's kind of like an observable list in CanJS, but a model list has a special property that whenever an item in it is destroyed, like on the server, the model list will automatically remove that 
item from kind of the list, from the array. Um, so when we destroy this, there's kind of an event that says, oh, this has been destroyed, the model list here is listening for that and removing the item. Now EJS itself is actually listening for changes in the list. So when you do this.each, it's actually binding to the length property of a list, and when the length property changes, um, it will update the DOM. It'll kind of run through and, up and update the DOM. So that's how this automatically gets removed for us just by calling destroy. So to recap, it gets destroyed. The, the to-do instance gets destroyed, but it's in this list that's being live bound with EJS, and EJS knows when it sees its length property changing to update the DOM, and we'll remove that item. So that's really, really cool, because you're doing that all the time, and um, CanJS just takes care of that for you. Let's now take a look at the editor control. The editor control's responsibility is to get past a to-do model instance and to listen for changes in this input element and to update the to-do instance, the to-do model instance's name property. It also has one other feature that if the to-do model instance like do dishes or do dish is destroyed, it should hide itself because it doesn't make sh makes any sense to be showing the editor widget on something that's destroyed. We will take a sneak peek to show how it's used. So here you can see we want to be able to create an edit control and then call the editor controls to do method with a new to do. Let's look at how the editor's to do method is implemented. The to do method takes a to do model instance, it updates the editor controls to do option and then it calls on. What on does is it tells a control to rebind all of its event handlers. This is important for the to-do destroyed event handler, which is obviously listening for a to-do to be destroyed. But the rebinding is important because it will unbind on the old to-do instance and rebind on the new one. Um, this also means that if the editor control was removed from the page, it would automatically unbind on the to-do instance. Um, but back to the to-do method, it calls on, so it starts listening to the to-dos destroyed, and then it calls set name, and set name updates the input element with the to-dos name. The change method is also an event handler that listens for the editor's input element, and when it changes its value, take out trashes, when it changes its value, it will update the to-do's name with the element's value, and it'll also save it back to the server. Finally is the routing control. This is a traditional controller tying the editor and to-do's controls together. When a new routing control is added to the body, it creates an editor control and a to-do's list control. It ties the editor control and to-do's control together by first listening to uh, selected events from the to-do's controller, to-do's control, and updating the ID property of the route with the to-do's, to-do model instances ID. This simultaneously creates a route and listens to it. So when the hash looks like this, this function gets called back, but it gets called back with an object with an ID property set to the, whatever the ID is, you know, that was set here. Um, and the routing control will show the editor control and then find the, uh, use the ID to find a to-do model instance, call, get that back in this callback, and then update the editor control with that model instance. And it also listens for when the this listens for when the hash is empty and calls back and just hides the editor. So that's it. This demo touches on all the major points of developing a CanJS app. It touches on live binding, routing, creating view controls, and hooking them up together with routing, and also shows how you can use synthetic events to communicate messages um, between different controls. 
And we're always looking to make CanJS better, so let us know what you think. Thank you.